this webinar. I'm Laura Maloof Miller. I'm a wellness program manager with HealthNet. As you can tell, Kristen Kayla, health promotion consultant uh, with HealthNet, is also on the line uh, to assist me. Just a couple of the housekeeping items we always review at the beginning of our webinars. Uh, everybody's been muted upon entry, that way to avoid any background noise. And on the screen there, if you wanted to change your audio settings, you simply click on the join audio icon. Also, at the end of the webinar, there's going to be a quick four question anonymous survey. And Kristen, I did not see the recording little thing come up, pop up. Um, if you are having any technical difficulties, feel free to chat directly to Kristen. And to open the chat box, you simply hover over the Zoom toolbar at the top of your screen. You're going to see a chat box icon there. You simply click on that icon and it should appear. Now, Kristen will receive your messages in real time, so she'll respond to your message in the order that she receives them. If you are attending this webinar in a conference room or if you used a single webinar access with your team, please chat that number of attendees to Kristen so that we can get a more accurate number on attendance. The information provided in this presentation is intended solely for the general information of the audience. It's not medical advice and shall not replace consultation with your physician or other qualified health provider. If you have any health-related questions or problems, please seek the advice of your physician or other qualified health provider. So happy day after Valentine's Day, everybody. Our topic today is cooking for a healthy heart. This is in recognition of Heart Health Month. So we're going to be looking at some key factors for heart health with a focus on heart healthy food choices. We'll be discussing what to do with those healthy foods once you get them home, just to make sure that they stay heart healthy. Now I'm gonna show you some easy ways to include more vegetables in your meals. Um, we even have a couple of cooking demonstrations. Okay, these are ones that I created and you will all receive copies of the recipes along with the recording in just a few days. Try to keep in mind, I am not a Michelin, Michelin star chef, so just kind of warning you. And we're going to look at what a healthy plate looks like, along with portion sizes. Also, it can be hard to cook for just one. So I'm going to give you some helpful tips and some healthier options when we're dining out. So what can you do today to take steps toward a healthy heart lifestyle? Now, these boxes are life's simple seven. They're defined by the American Heart Association as the seven risk factors that people can improve through lifestyle changes to help achieve ideal cardiovascular health. Now, a healthy diet is one of your best weapons for fighting cardiovascular disease. When you eat a heart-healthy diet, you improve your chances for feeling good and, of course, staying healthy for the, all your whole life. We know here in these boxes that these other factors are important too, but for today's webinar, we're gonna be focusing on the healthy diet box you see here. Now, according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the percentage of US adults meeting the daily fruit and vegetable intake recommendations, it's really low. In a 2019 report, it was 12% and 10% respectively of those that were surveyed. And they did serve people in the United States. So what are we eating? We're eating the standard American diet. These ultra processed foods contain large amounts of unhealthy fats, sugars, salt or sodium, trans fat, artificial sweeteners, flavors, colors, and preservatives. Now, all of these harmful ingredients and additives, they take a huge toll on our delicate and extremely important gut bacteria and the immune system overall. So these foods contain very low amounts of vitamins, minerals, and other vital nutrients our bodies need on a daily basis. That's for us to stay healthy, thriving, and safe from disease. Now, when we eat whole foods, we're getting the food in its natural state because we're getting it intact with all the vitamins, minerals, and other nutrients that are 
are already in the food. So basically, it's the healthy whole food rather than the bits that remain after refinement and processing. So think of like the difference between an apple and apple juice or a baked potato and a box of mashed potatoes. Now, usually the term whole foods is confined to things like vegetables, fruits, and grains, but animal products such as beef, pork, chicken, fish, eggs, and milk, those can be whole foods too. Think about like a skinless chicken breast. That is preferable to eating like processed chicken nuggets. Now, if you're trying to eat a healthier diet, relying on more whole foods is a great place to start. The studies have shown consumption of whole foods has been associated with lowering your risk for cardiovascular disease, cancers, and type 2 diabetes. Let's take a look at some heart-healthy foods. What does heart-healthy eating actually look like? Well, we definitely want to eat less saturated fat. So cutting back on the fatty meats and high-fat dairy products. You do want to limit foods like pizza, burgers, those creamy sauces or gravy. You want to replace saturated fat with healthier, unsaturated fats like seafood, nuts, seeds, avocados, and poly and monounsaturated oils. Watch out for the salt or sodium. You need to read the nutrition label and choose foods that are lower in sodium. Look for labels that say things like low sodium or no salt added, especially if you're looking for canned soups, canned vegetables, packaged meals, and snack foods. We of course wanna get more fiber in our diet as well. So eating vegetables, fruits, beans, and whole grains, that's to add fiber to your diet. Now these types of foods make you feel full since it takes the body longer to digest them. When it comes to dairy, look for things that are fat-free or low-fat options. Protein, you wanna choose a variety of foods with protein. Look for things like fish and shellfish or lean ground chicken or turkey. Look for the package that says 93% lean. Also, other lean meats include things like pork shoulder, beef sirloin, or ground beef. You also want to, again, find something that's 93% lean. However, when it comes to ground beef, you can go with a higher fat content in order to save money because sometimes it's expensive to buy the super lean stuff. But after you cook it, drain that excess fat or rinse it in water to get rid of the fat. Think of things like beans, peas, and lentils. There's so many different types. Think of black beans or pinto beans or kidney beans or chickpeas, split peas, lentils, and many, many more. Eggs are also a good source of protein. So are unsalted nuts, seeds, and nut butters. Think of things like almond butter or peanut butter. You do definitely wanna choose a variety that's low in sugar. And don't forget about tofu as well good sources of protein. Here's our first cooking demonstration. I'm gonna show you how to make homemade hummus. It's super simple and you'll find it, it's an, a healthier alternative to store-bought simply because you can decide how much of the ingredients you wanna put in there. I like to spread it on sandwiches or dip it in raw veggies. All right, here we go. Please work, please work. Okay. Hi, it's Laura Maluf Miller with HealthNet. Today, I am going to show you how to make some homemade hummus. If you're looking for a healthier alternative from the dips and chips, if you're going to parties or you just want to have a little bit of an appetizer, I'm going to show you how I make my super simple, almost don't even need to measure, a recipe for homemade hummus. The first thing I'm going to be using is tahini. So this is ground up sesame seeds. It's like a creamy peanut butter. And so you will find this in the grocery store in the peanut butter jelly aisle. And it does tend to separate. So before you go to use it, you want to make sure that you stir it up. 
once it's open, you will need to refrigerate it. So that's the first ingredient that actually goes into the blender. You can certainly use a Cuisinart if you prefer, but I'm just using my standard blender. And the secret to this recipe is putting in the tahini first along with the lemon juice. If you have a fresh lemon, you can certainly use that as well. So you're gonna to wanna to put both these things in first, and then you're gonna to want to blend it for about a minute or so. This helps the hummus have a very nice, fluffy, smooth consistency. Olive oil is also part of the recipe, so you wanna make sure you're using the one that's for sauteing or cooking. Uh, this is, uh, it's oil, it's fat. However, olive oil is a heart healthier fat versus butter. Certainly, we're gonna be using some garlic. This adds a lot of flavor to the hummus and feel free to use as much as you like. Certainly, you can see what is on the recipe, uh, but um, if you like a little bit more, a little bit less, this is a very flexible recipe, so you can um, do what you prefer. So I'm using the jarred garlic. Certainly, you can use fresh garlic. I'm adding a little bit of salt, a little bit of cumin. And as you blend the garbanzo beans, they may be a little thick. So what you'll wanna do is just have some water on hand so that you can blend it to the consistency that you prefer. Now, I was rushing in the grocery store when I bought this product. I could have selected a no salt added or a salt free. However, this can actually has three and a half servings in this can and per serving is 420 milligrams of sodium. Okay, that's way too high. So when I am using a canned product like tomatoes or beans, I will go ahead and rinse it in the sink. So I've got a colander ready and I'm gonna rinse, rinse the beans off. So whether I'm making soups or stews, I always rinse my canned products, but you certainly, if you, can find a product with no salt added, no additional salt added, or a salt-free product. If you're watching your sodium, then that's a good option as well. If you can't find it, then again, go ahead and just rinse it in the sink. So the first thing I'm gonna put in is the tahini and the lemon juice. Then it's gonna come, I'm gonna use one can. Uh, the recipe asks for one can. However, I do like to double this recipe if I'm going to be serving it um, if I got a party or bringing it to a party, or if I just want, you know, a little extra through the week, then this recipe is again, very flexible. You can double the recipe. So I'm going to rinse off the cans. Um, and then I'm going to add after that's after the tahini and the lemon juice are blended for at least a good minute, then I'm going to start to add the gabonzo beans half at a time. So you want to watch the consistency. That's when the garlic and the olive oil and the cumin and the salt will go in as well. And you simply blend it. Through the magic of television, I have already created my recipe here. So again, you wanna add water and blend and then stop and scrape the sides so that you get a nice consistency. Now mine has a different color to it because I planned ahead and I actually added some sweet peppers that I had grilled or roasted the day before. So I added these. Again, it's a different way to add some additional vegetables uh, to your diet. So roasted, these sweet peppers really add a lot of flavor to the hummus. Yeah, completely optional, but if you wanted to do that. Okay. So I have completed the hummus. This is what it looks like. I'm gonna go ahead and refrigerate it and let it marinate. And then what can I serve with this? If I was going to a party or just wanting to have it myself, I could certainly use the flatbread or non. Now this is gonna be higher in carbohydrate. So if you wanted to go with a healthier option, I actually like the peppers. I split them open and I fill them with the hummus. One also, one of my favorites is to slice the cucumber and put that over the cucumber as well. So I hope you enjoyed this recipe. Thank you so much for watching. All right.
moving on. Great. So we are so lucky to have the availability year round of fresh fruits and vegetables. In the first column, you see a short list of fresh vegetables. So think of leafy greens for salads, such as romaine lettuce, spinach, and kale. Look for canned vegetables that are low in sodium and choose frozen vegetables without the added butter or sauces. Now in the middle column, you'll see a list of fruits, such as apples, oranges, bananas, pears, and peaches. So you wanna pick items that are in season. That's for peak flavor and also to stretch your grocery budget. Choose canned, frozen, or dried fruit without added sugars. Again, you wanna watch the portion size on the dried fruit because the sugars in those food items are concentrated. And when it comes to whole grains, make sure to check the nutrition label to make sure it's a whole grain product. Don't be fooled by products that say multi-grain. That just means it's many grains, grains, and it doesn't necessarily mean that they are whole grain. So you wanna look for food items like whole grain bread, bagels, English muffins, tortillas, brown or wild rice, quinoa, oats, and whole wheat or whole grain pastas. Here's our next recipe. Uh, this is a super easy salad, which also can be used as a side dish. It's pretty light, very light, and the color of the carrots really pop on your plate. All right, give this a try. This one. Hi everybody, Laura from HealthNet. I am gonna show you how to make a really quick side dish or salad. It's called a carrot seed salad. So you'll get a recipe. Um, if you don't already have it, you'll get a copy of this recipe. Again, super simple. Laura's trying to cook in the kitchen. This actually doesn't require any cooking as well. All right. So basically what I'm gonna do is just create a salad using the um, carrots. These are um, already shredded. You can certainly get a whole carrot and, and uh, shred it as well. So I'm gonna dump this whole thing in here, do this bowl. Again, super versatile, depending on how many people that you're serving, you can adjust the ingredients and the amounts. So pre-shredded carrots into the bowl. This recipe talks about roasting the seeds, sunflower seeds, pumpkin seeds, whatever you want. I'm not gonna do that. I've already bought seeds that are already uh, roasted. So basically that's pretty much it. And then it asks for a handful of chives. I don't really like chives, so I'm not gonna put that in there. What you need now is to make the dressing. So the dressing is half a cup of lemon juice. You could, I'm using the bottled lemon juice. Certainly if you have a fresh lemon, you can do that. So I'm just gonna put this into a bowl here. Again, you can adjust the quantities depending on how many servings you would like. And then, so it's lemon juice, half a teaspoon of ground peppers. This is just going into my bowl here. I'm actually not measuring this, but that's okay. On the pepper, a teaspoon of brown sugar. So I've got light brown sugar, which is of course gonna add some sweetness to this because you've got the lemon, which is rather tart. And so just a teaspoon. Just use this, let me go in here. I'm just gonna eyeball it, okay? So about a teaspoon brown sugar goes in there. You are certainly more than welcome to actually measure if you would like. And then a tablespoon of sunflower oil or olive oil. We know this is a heart healthy oil. This is extra virgin olive oil. This is heart healthier choice for you versus something like that would be in solid at room temperature, like a butter. When it's liquid at room temperature, it's better for you. It's, it's still a fat and it still contains calories for fat, um, but for heart healthier choice, olive oil is a better choice. And of course, you can use sunflower, sunflower oil as well. All right, and I actually just put that into my carrots, not into the dressing. So, okay, uh, guess I'm not a five-star Michelin chef, so I should have put it into the, into the dressing, but oh well, it's all going into the same place anyway, and that was our last ingredient. So I'm just gonna pour it all in, my carrots, and I'm just gonna mix it up here. Just tossing it gently in the dressing, 
try not to have little shreds of carrot go all over the kitchen. Oh, all right. So we're just loosening these up here. And that is pretty much it. Here comes the seed part. So depending on when you are going to be serving this, if you want to serve it right away, then you go ahead and add the seeds. How many seeds did it ask for? Um, half a cup. Now this says raw sunflower or pumpkin seeds. And of course they would have been roasted in the oven. However, mine are already roasted. Mine are actually roasted and salted. However, if you are watching your sodium, then you can choose one that is roasted with without salt, whichever you prefer. So either seeds, I've got both sunflower seeds and I also had pumpkin seeds. So whatever is in your, in your kitchen and is available for you, you would then just toss the seeds inside here and serve it. I am not going to toss the seeds in quite yet because I'm serving this later in the day. And I feel like the seeds, when they're tossed in the salad and the dressing, if they're in the refrigerator for several hours, the seeds tend to get soft. And I don't like that texture. You like it, totally fine. Um, otherwise, I just wait till the very end. And then I'm going to, right before I'm about to serve it, and then I'm going to toss in the seeds, toss it around, and then go ahead and serve it. Now, this is a great way to get some extra vegetables in your diet. The bright color of the carrots, carrots have beta carotene, which is really good for our eyes. Simple way to serve this is both a salad or maybe even as a side dish. And that's pretty much it. So I hope you enjoy the recipe. All right. So when it comes to dairy products, Make sure that most of your choices in this category are on the low fat or the non-fat choices. You also want to uh, vary your dairy sources since some of these can be these products can be really high um, in sugar, contain a lot of sugar. So you want to choose fat-free or low fat, things like milk, plain Greek yogurt, cheese, cottage cheese, or soy milk. Um, if you happen to like the nut milks, they are actually lower in calories than cow's milk. And they do have just as much or sometimes even more calcium and vitamin D. These sometimes will even have fiber in them. Um, and that's certainly something you won't find uh, in cow's milk. Now, unless you have a nut allergy, these are quite allergy friendly and they're also lower in carbs. So if you're looking for a low carb uh, food choice. Lots of ways to vary your protein. So think of meat, poultry, fish, beans, peas, eggs, nuts, and soy. All of these are all really good sources of protein. So we need about five or six ounce equivalents each day. And as you can see here on the list, it really doesn't take that much to count uh, as an ounce. Maybe you're gonna start your morning with the scrambled eggs. Uh, maybe you wanna add some cooked shrimp or a hard boiled egg to a salad at lunch and include a protein at dinner. Pretty easy to do. When it comes to fat, we do need some, after all, the fat soluble vitamins do need fat to be absorbed into our body. However, I think we all know it's really easy to consume way more than we actually need. So you wanna go for things that are unsaturated. So poly and monounsaturated, those guys are your friends. They are good for heart health and they also lower the LDL or the bad cholesterol, as well as the triglyceride level. Triglycerides is another fat that um, can sometimes be found in the blood. You do wanna watch out though for the saturated fat. So things that, that are gonna have full fat, things like dairy, butter, cheese, those are not so good for our heart, okay? Cause they can raise the bad cholesterol levels. And we definitely want to try to avoid as much as we can those artificial trans fats, the hydrogenated oils and tropical oils. Well, guess where these are? They're all in all the foods we like to eat. Things like baked goods, pastries, you're gonna find them in cakes and cookies and fried foods. Unfortunately, they're really bad for your heart and it also raises the bad cholesterol levels. 
So when you are cooking, you wanna choose a vegetable oil, something like a canola, a corn, olive oil, peanut, safflower, uh, soybean, sunflower, or avocado, you definitely want to use those in the liquid rather than something like a butter, you know, when you're cooking. Definitely check the nutrition label, look for options that have less saturated fat. Some other things you may want to try are like choosing a low fat or a light mayonnaise instead of a full fat one. I like to choose the kind that have the olive oil based mayonnaise. Also, when it comes to a salad dressing, look for things like vinaigrettes or Italian salad dressings. You want to try to avoid the things that are creamy, such as like a ranch or a blue cheese dressing. If you're up to it, you can actually make your own salad dressing by simply mixing some olive oil with Dijon mustard, salt and pepper. You mix that together, it makes a nice salad dressing. I also like to use red wine vinegar along with a little less of the salad dressing to kind of stretch it a little bit. Now, if you like meat, you can still reduce your risk of heart disease if you limit the amount and choose healthier types. So one portion of meat is like two to three ounces or about the size of a deck of cards or the palm of your hand. You wanna choose lean cuts of meat. So look for words like round or loin or sirloin on the package. Also, trim off as much of that visible fat as you can before cooking it. And you wanna use healthier cooking methods, baking, broiling, stewing, roasting, barbecuing, even your air fryer. To minimize the processed red meat. So things like, and occasionally bacon, ham, salami, sausages, hot dogs, beef jerky, deli slices. Those are for like an occasional, occasional treat. All right, let's look for some ways that we can save some time. Let's say you've just been to the grocery store, the farmer's market, and you brought home those fresh fruits and vegetables. How can you make the most of them? Hopefully you brought, bought only what you plan to use for the week. That way they won't spoil before you can use them. You definitely wanna save yourself some time by not having to constantly wash and prep your fruits and vegetables and herbs every time you wanna cook something. Do this all ahead of time. This works great for a quick salad. You just simply toss those cut veggies with a, in with a bag of salad. I like to use shredded carrots. I also will pre-cut radishes and cucumber. You can grab those cut celery or the little carrots with some salad dressing and a slice of cheese. That makes a really quick snack. I also will hard boil my eggs ahead of time. That way I can just slice them up, put them in a salad. Also, I slice cucumbers, anything like the, the celery that's already sliced or the baby carrots, that stuff's gonna go great with the homemade hummus I just showed you. Uh, make sure to have berries, low-fat granola, maybe some chopped nuts and spices like cinnamon or pumpkin pie spice. That stuff is super great and ready to top your Greek yogurt. You also wanna prep once and then have it for many meals. So. I personally do a breakfast burrito filling. It's ground chicken, onions, mild green chilies, some olives, a little taco seasoning or salsa. I scramble that with eggs. I make it ahead of time. It's ready to go for a quick breakfast. You also wanna use ingredients in multiple ways. For example, if you're having fajitas one night, well, those same ingredients make great pizza toppings for another night. So you simply slice and dice your favorite pizza toppings, do this all ahead of time, bag it up, have it ready to go. Another great tip is to use passive cooking techniques like a crock pot, a rice cooker, an Instapot or an air fryer. If these items do the cooking for you, which saves you, of course, valuable time. Now try items that require no prep. Look for pre-washed mixed grain salad, the baby carrots, tomato, cherry tomatoes, potatoes, already ready for you. You may also find some common pre-chopped items, such as shaved Brussels sprouts or cubed butternut squash or riced cauliflower or a coleslaw mix, or you know the pre-packaged vegetables, things like, uh, this would be in the fre fresh section, so things like asparagus or squash, green beans or pea pods, those things are ready for a salad or a stir fry. Don't forget about frozen fruits and vegetables. Those are great too. If you're gonna just toss them into a soup or a stew, and then the frozen fruit really adds a nice thickness uh, to, a, uh, to a smoothie. 
All right, let's look at the building blocks of a healthy plate. Over the past 20 years, portion sizes have increased by 138%. That's causing us to eat way more than we actually realize. But you know, it's not easy to visualize, well, how much is three ounces or two tablespoons? But you can use your hand as a measuring device for serving sizes. So you think of your fingertip, think of a teaspoon. So this would be things like butter, margarine, mayonnaise, or your oils. Your thumb, however, is one to two tablespoons. So again, peanut butter, maybe a hard cheese, maybe a salad dressing or cream cheese. This again is a serving size. So a handful, one to two ounces, that would be things like nuts or pretzels or crackers. The palm of your hand, three to four ounces. Maybe that's gonna look like meat or fish, pasta, potatoes, cooked vegetables. Um, and then if you take your whole fist, that equates to a cup. So you think of maybe a fresh fruit, raw vegetables, even salads, cereal, and soup when it comes to those portion sizes. You know, you may already be familiar with the plate planner, but keep in mind that the plate size is important too. Now this guide is for a nine inch dinner plate. So here's your homework assignment. What size plates are you using at home? Um, check and see. Sometimes they're a little bit bigger than a nine inch, okay? So the next time you're out to dinner, also pay attention to the size of the plate. You may be really surprised at how large it is, those meals when you're eating out. When we take a look at this guide, we want half of our plate to be vegetables and fruit. We wanna include a whole grain. So you of course wanna look for something that's 100% whole grain on the food label. We're gonna add a lean protein. Uh, we're gonna avoid any extra fat like sauces, gravies or sauces. That simply just adds fat and calories to otherwise healthy choices. And don't forget the dairy. So you can replace sour cream or regular cheese with the low fat yogurt a milk and a cheese. It's hard to see in the picture there on the left, but there is some fruit on the side there as well as a dairy. So how can we include more fruits and vegetables in our diet? Well, smoothies, they're a fantastic way to knock out three or more servings of fruit and vegetables in one balanced and fortified blended drink. It's tasty and of course it's super easy to make. Um, now the beauty of smoothies is that you can create whatever you want based on your specific nutrition needs or desires. Be careful though, when you blend fruits and vegetables, remember you're losing the fiber content. So you wanna go easy on the high sugar fruits, such as bananas and mangoes. You also wanna to stick to whole fruits when making smoothies and ditch the fruit juices. You start pouring fruit juice in there, then it's really going to up the sugar content very, very quickly. You want to make sure your smoothie is not just a sugary milkshake. You can create more nutritious omelets by adding sliced mushrooms, tomatoes, peppers, onion, garlic to your, um, to your eggs. Also, add vegetables to things like extra vegetables, to things like casseroles, soups, sandwiches, salads, pizza, and pasta dishes. If you want to, you can actually puree or braid or even shred vegetables into your sauces and other foods. Now, you know the zucchini noodles or spaghetti squash noodles, those are great substitute for regular flour or rice-based ones. And when you're baking, you can add vegetables when you're baking, try making a zucchini bread or even a banana nut muffins. You also want to prep heart or healthy snacks and stock them in places where you might want something to munch on, like either at the office or the home office or you're in your car. So you know, this wants to make the incorporating fruits and vegetables into your life just a bit easier. Maybe keep an eye catching bowl of fruit in your kitchen or at work. That's makes snacking on things like apples, bananas, oranges, much more accessible. Here's our last video. This is where I'm showing you how to do a bruschetta. Hello, welcome to Laura's Trying to Cook in the Kitchen. Today I'm gonna to show you how I do a bruschetta, which is a Italian appetizer that's usually 
made with tomatoes, garlic, basil. It's an appetizer that's usually served on a crusty piece of bread, like maybe a French bread or a baguette. It's broiled with a little Parmesan cheese on the top. So today I'm gonna to show you how to make one a bruschetta with some extra texture with some extra vegetables in it to try and sneak in those vegetables. So what I did, you're all gonna get a copy of the recipe, but what I did is I chopped up a Roma tomato, chopped up some mushrooms, so well half of a zucchini, and then I had some fresh basil. My husband is actually growing basil because I cannot grow anything and make it uh, live. So this is add some bright colors and some texture, super versatile. I'm not making very much. So when you look at the recipe and ask for a whole zucchini, I actually just used to have. So it really just depends on who you're serving. If it's just for yourself or for a party or such, then you would want a larger amount. So I'm just going to put all of this in my bowl. Just like this, trying not to spill it. But you know, this is live TV. So if I spill, oh, you actually can't see. All right, perfect. So I spilled a little bit, no problem. So I'm just gonna put all this into my bowl. Super simple, super easy to do recipe. Actually doesn't require any cooking. So that makes it high on my list. So I'm just putting all of this here into my bowl. If you don't have fresh basil, that's okay. Um, the fresh basil probably gives it a bit more of a flavor, but if you have dry basil, you probably just need to use a bit more to really get that flavor of the basil. Okay, that's all into my bowl. Yes. So I'm just gonna mix it around this. Now the recipe asks for the next part is kind of like a bit of a dressing that you're going to mix this with. So it asks for um, two tablespoons of um, extra virgin olive oil. So this is a heart healthy uh, oil versus a butter or any other thing that might be saturated fat. This is mono and polyunsaturated because it's liquid at room temperature. It asks for two uh, tablespoons of it. I'm actually just going to put in one because I don't have very much that I'm making. This is just for my husband and I tonight for dinner. So I'm just putting in one. Again, you can decide how much you want to put in there, depending on if you're exactly following the recipe or what. So extra virgin olive oil, it asks for balsamic vinegar. I don't have any, okay? But I do have this balsamic glaze. So this is much more condensed. It's more like a syrup and it has a lot more sugar in it. So I'm just gonna use a tiny bit, just for the flavor really of it. But if you have balsamic vinegar, then you can go ahead certainly and use that. That would be two tablespoons of balsamic vinegar, depending on how much you're making. And then here comes the garlic. So depending on how much garlic that you like, you can adjust the amount. Some people really like garlic, others not so much. I'm just gonna put a little bit in there. It also the recipe asks for an onion or a shallot. I don't really like onion, so I'm leaving it out. Again, super versatile. So we've got our olive oil in here. I did put a little bit of the balsamic glaze. So instead of the balsamic vinegar, and then just some garlic and then now just some pepper in there. So we're just gonna mix all of this together. Super simple. We're over halfway done. Just mixing it together. So that's what it looks like. And then we're going to use a, I'm using for not a baguette, but I'm using, this is um, Dave's Insanity Bread, Killer, Dave's Killer Bread. This is a thin sliced, I'm using good seed. You can use whatever you want. I'm looking for some extra fiber, both the fiber in the vegetables as well as in the bread. So I went and found one that is good seed. It's also thin, which keeps the portion size and the carbs a little bit less. So I toasted a piece of it. The recipe says you should spray it with cooking 
olive oil cooking spray if you would like to, but I didn't. I think the olive oil, the cooking spray would just help it to toast, to brown a little bit better. I used my toaster or oven. You can use a toaster, you can do a broiler, whichever you prefer. So, and then, um, so I did not use the cooking spray on here, <clears throat> but feel free to do that. Then if you want a little extra garlic flavor, you can take the garlic and then just with a knife, spread it on here. If you're using a fresh garlic, you may wanna just rub it, cut it and then rub it on here. Certainly you can use fresh garlic in the recipe as well, but I had the jar of garlic. So this is fresh um, garlic, but you can use whatever kind you want, chopped, whatever you want, okay? Then you're simply just going to top it. This is nice warm toasted bread. So you're just going to top it with your mixture here. This adds a lot of color. You know, we eat with our eyes as well. So the color, the smell, that garlic, that basil, and the texture. Okay, you can be generous with the portion on there. And then I'm going to top it with a little bit of Parmesan cheese. You can use whatever kind of cheese you have, maybe mozzarella, Romano, whatever you prefer. So you just top it with the cheese here just like that. And then I'm going to add the balsamic glaze. Again, this is high in sugar. This is 10 carbohydrates, eight grams of sugar for just a, a tablespoon of it. And really you just need a little drizzle on the top for color and for flavor. So I'm just gonna drizzle just a little bit here on the top. Look how cute that is. So it looks really nice. And so a serving size is one, one slice of the bread. So you can cut it in half if you prefer, but I would serve this with maybe a piece of salmon or some chicken Parmesan. So it's a great way to incorporate vegetables, which is of course heart healthy. Uh, and uh, it's a really nice looking plate as well. Thank you for watching. All right, also, on this particular one, if you have any leftovers, um, I like to scramble that with eggs and have it for breakfast the next day. All right, our last section, cooking for one and some dining out, here's some tips. So, you know, cooking for one can actually be a kind of a daunting task. So to eliminate any food waste, you wanna plan your meals and purchase the items that you will use or eat pretty quickly. Apples, oranges, carrots, celery, those things are good for snacks and they actually stay fresh longer than, than other items. Um, cook one big meal at the beginning of the week and then have leftovers the rest of the week. Things like a big pot of soup or maybe some enchiladas. Uh, also keep in mind things like berries, bananas, tomatoes, asparagus, some herbs like uh, parsley and cilantro. Those things tend to go qu uh, bad quick quickly. So you want to make sure you eat them first. And then try to master the art of making less. So cutting recipes in half or even quarters if you need to. Keep the meals simple. Uh, do kind of uh, just an easy breakfast and a lunch, and then you pull out the big pots and the pans for dinner. When you're dining out, you can make wiser and more informed choices by looking at the nutritional information provided by the restaurants. If you haven't gone to a restaurant, it's the first time you're going, make sure you look at the menu online before you go. Try not to drink your calories. Those, um, the, our body processes those um, nutrients or whatever quickly. Okay, sugars and fat really quickly. So it's going to leave you hungry and not satisfied. So you want to look for things that are going to be lower in sugar and also in fat. Maybe skip the appetizer, start with a, a broth based soup, not a cream based soup, or even a dinner salad. That's going to help to curb your hunger and you're getting in those extra vegetables. Choose items that are baked, broiled, steamed, or sauteed. Avoid those creamy sauces or things that are happen to be breaded, battered, or fried. You can make some substitutions, such as instead of French fries, go with fruit or steamed veggies. Do you guys happen to know, have you ever ordered those crispy Brussels sprouts? They're so delicious. Well, do you know how they get them all crunchy yet tender? It turns out they put them in the fryer just like with the French fries. Oh no, you know, no wonder I like them so much. Um, keep in mind that portions can be really big. So you wanna split it with someone or take it home for leftovers. 
Uh, hope you enjoyed the presentation today. So don't forget these little tips. Keep heart health in mind when you're selecting whole foods and work toward including daily servings of fruits and vegetables. Design your meals around the vegetable. Think of them first as versatile, flavorful, and amazing ingredients for meals, snacks, and smoothies. Now, if you're eating highly processed foods, consider making the transition to unprocessed or minimally processed foods and make it sort of a habit to read those nutrition labels and ingredient lists when you're grocery shopping. Use those dining out tips for making healthier selections. And finally, be intentional with your food choices. Be aware of, of what you are eating and why you're eating. Like, are you hungry or is it just a habit? And the consequences of your choices. Are these healthier choices or hmm, maybe not so much? Now, these last slides are on programs that help our HealthNet members stay tracked with their health. Our members can find the wellness programs and other resources when logging in to their HealthNet account. And our health risk assessment is called the Real Age Test. Make sure to take it and check out our wellness center programs. My Strength has proven tools that are very effective in managing our mind, body, and spirit. This is both an online program and an app. It has tools to reduce stress, anxiety, depression, or substance abuse. It has modules, quick videos from mental health professionals, guided meditations on the topics of joy, laughter, positivity, meditation, mindfulness, relaxation, COVID-19, and racism, just to name a few. Now, this program is open to everybody, not just HealthNet members. It's a new year. Maybe you've got some new health goals in mind. If you're interested in working with a health coach, they can help you create some goals, make a plan, and support you through your journey. A health coach is a great resource, especially when you're trying to eat more heart-healthy foods. Now, if you have a health concern, our HealthNet members can call the Nurse Advice Line to speak to a registered nurse. Save money and take advantage of our discounts. HealthNet members, you can receive discounts on Weight Watchers, chiropractic and acupuncture services, eye care, hearing aids, even the fitness club discount. Now, if you're not a HealthNet member, check with your health plan to see if they offer similar programs, services, and discounts. We've got a variety of online health challenges every month. So ongoing challenges are going to be on the topics of stress, steps, and sleep. And they're open to everyone. For HealthNet, we've got HealthNet members. In March, we're continuing with Healthier You. This started in January, and it's a 90-day challenge. So it's not too late to join. And if you've already been tracking your green days, you'll get credit for that. This challenge runs until the end of March. Last but not least, please mark your calendar. Join us for next month's wellness webinar. This one's going to be brought to you by our partner, John Muir Health. It will focus on the way we think and how it has enormous influence over how our body behaves, how our immune system functions, and our physical and mental health. So we hope you'll join us again next month. Please remember, if you attended this webinar in a conference room or used a single webinar access with your team, please chat that number of attendees to Kristen. Now, anyone who registered for this webinar, you're gonna receive a link to the recording in just a few days, along with the copies of the recipes. Thank you so much for your time today. You may now exit the webinar.